Now, final score with Nick Walters on Fox 16. Well, I feel like everybody was pretty excited to get back and be excited to be here in the, in the beautiful uh, fall camp first day. So, I mean, I don't know about poo, but I mean, I feel like for me, it wasn't uh, that hard for me getting up. I mean, I was pretty excited, really, uh, rock and roll. I think we're all ready to rock and roll. Welcome into final score, and it might not feel like it outside in early August, but welcome to the fall. Arkansas football will be here before we know it. Two weeks from high school charity games, three weeks from week zero, and four weeks from the Razorbacks kicking off the season right here in Little Rock. Preparation officially went underway this week on the hill as the Hogs started fall camp on Friday. The team is back in the facility and back on the practice field, gearing up for the long haul. KJ Jefferson and the Razorbacks open the season at War Memorial against Western Carolina, eventually diving into an SEC stretch that gives the Hogs the sixth toughest schedule in the nation. Of course, Sam Pittman's Hogs are no strangers to a brutal slate. Arkansas is adjusting to some change, returning valuable starters like KJ, Rocket Sanders, Chris Poupal, and others. But there's two first year coordinators and a reshuffled offensive line. The Hogs say this transition so far has been a smooth one. KJ, what areas would you say that you've grown most working with Danny Enos? I would say uh, just becoming a quarterback. I mean, just being able to uh, just me and him get in and just talk about ball, um, talk about life, talk about everything. But from a football um, aspect, just being able to just get in, pick his brain, see how just knowing how he would call a game and what plays he's thinking on, the, on third down or first down and stuff like that. So just being able to be a quarterback and him giving us uh, the freedom and responsibility to take over in the game and control the game, whether it's something going wrong or something going good to keep that even kill mindset. Uh, what we've got to do, in all honesty, we've got to make sure that our tackles are right. And I believe in both tackles uh, that we have. I believe in further deep. I believe in Chambly. I believe in Harris. I believe in uh, Crawford. We've got to find out who's going to help us win at tackle. Uh, we believe that Kudis is ultra-talented and Devin Manuel. And so... Uh, we've got to find that, and to be honest with you, the next question is who's going to play, who's who's the next center? I feel like some of the guys on defense look up to me in that aspect because they feel like they are uh, comfortable enough to come ask me questions about anything or just, you know, just for me to just pick them up when their spirits are low and things like that. But I feel like I've gotten real comfortable in my position and my role for this team, and I feel it's going to be a great season. So what do you think of the two transfer linebackers so far? They both doing a good job. Uh, Antonio came in, you know, very vocal leader, very vocal type guy. And, you know, he leads by action. Uh, today we see we got to see him run today, too, and he was doing pretty well. We're all excited to see what the Hogs have in store this fall, and we're already getting reasons to be excited for the future. Last weekend, Arkansas landed their second commit of the 2025 class, a Swiss Army knife out of Bauxite who saw his interest shoot up this summer. We caught up with Marcus Wimberly to hear about his decision to stay home. Razorback football's class of 2025 is starting to grow, now made up of two commits from Central Arkansas. Those incoming juniors laying the foundation for the class are CAC quarterback Grayson Wilson and the most recent addition as a home state hog, box site safety Marcus Wimberly. Let's go ahead and make that 16. It's something me and my family have kind of talked about, it's something I've prayed about. And I've actually kept in touch with Grayson Wilson quite a bit. And about every day, he'll, he'll text me, hey, man, you're going to be a hog, right? It's been pretty awesome, you know, building relationships, being able to see my family go throughout this process. It's just a lot of excitement. It really shows how good God is, the ability to have the opportunity to play for the hogs one day. It's just, it's just awesome. Entering the summer as an under-the-radar prospect, Wimberly was offered by Sam Pittman and the Razorbacks on June 17th, adding to a list of other schools like UAPB. Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines would follow suit, offering the versatile six foot one ball hawk days later. It's pretty crazy to me how it all works sometimes. It kind of went from being below ground zero to kind of just on cloud nine for me. Instead of saving his commitment for the future, Wimberly opted to call the hogs and pledge to Arkansas on July 29th. On the way up to the hill, we were sitting there and I text Coach Woodson, hey coach, we're on our way up. And he calls me and he's like, hey man, just want to let you know I'm super excited to get you up there, get mom up there, because it was my mom's first time going to the hill. So I talked with them on the way up there and I was like, we're going to do it, we're going to make it happen. 
much to the delight of Boxside head coach Caleb Perry, a former offensive lineman for the Hogs. I'm just thrilled to death about it. I mean, deep down, you know, I want him to consider everybody, but deep down in my heart, I'm like, man, just go with Arkansas. And so I, I knew with him being an in-state guy, that was probably going to be what he did. And obviously he did that. And I think that's the stress for him recruiting wise. He'll be able to enjoy the next two years, worry about getting bigger and stronger, faster, uh, being a great leader and a great teammate. But the biggest part of it was it's in-state and I grew up a Hogs fan. Coach Pittman came in, he's doing a wonderful job. Coach Whitson's a great guy, great coach. The culture up there, it's, it's great. It doesn't matter what position you're playing, what grade you're in, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just gonna be a great brotherhood. They're all gonna have your back and especially the fans are gonna have your back in your state. You know, you got a whole state behind you cheering you on and behind you in whatever you do. You know, I played uh, with a guy named Tony Bua, and I really believe that Marcus Wimberly, and these are big shoes to fill, and I think that if Tony watched Marcus play, Tony Bua would love to watch Marcus Wimberly, uh, and I think Marcus is probably gonna be the next Tony Bua at Arkansas. Wimberly broke onto the scene for the Miners as a sophomore, playing both ways as a running back and a receiver. He'd help lead Boxite to a seven and three record in class 4A following the Nashville in the first round of playoffs. You know, I just kept my head down, uh, worked hard, and um, you know, I kept on sending tapes out to coaches here and there, Coach Whitson, Coach Pittman, Coach Jay Harbaugh at Michigan. I think when it comes to football, I process things a little faster than the people I'm around, you know. Everything processed fast in my mind. I can be able to slow down the game and make the right play, the right read. You know, I also think my effort is a big thing. Marcus is a, a fantastic player to coach. He's a great kid. He's a coach's kid. He does all the little things right. You know, he, he hustles between drills. But as far as his football IQ, he can play anything. And so on defense, he allows us to, we can bring him down in the box. We can bring him off the edge. We can drop him into coverages. We can man him up with people on offense. He can play quarterback, he can play wide out for us, we can use him as a running back. What he gives us because of his football IQ, he gives us so many options. He can also punt the ball really well, so he's probably gonna be the one punting for us as well. So uh, he brings a lot to the table. Coach Perry has big plans for the future hog this fall, and Wimberly is ready to embrace the spotlight as an SEC commit. Well, the plans is to get him on the field as much as possible. So, he, you know, he's going to have to do his part with nutrition, make sure he's carved up and hydrated and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, he'll have to come off the field a little bit to get water and those types of things. But we want to use him on both sides of the ball as much as possible. And even if he's not getting the ball on offense, teams still have to, the fear of him being out there and maybe running a deep route or something, teams have to respect him being on the field. And so uh, obviously having guys like that make, uh, make you look smart as a coach. And so I'm all about having players that make me look smart. You know, I'm just gonna continue to work hard, put in the extra work, you know. Um, well, obviously we get work out here in practice and in the weight room as a team, but doing the small things outside of it, you know, even such small things as a diet, whatever that may be, is taking in some more calories, drinking some more water just really doing the small things because you can't do any of the big things if you can't do the small things right. So I'm just going to continue to work hard and work on the small things. Coming up, we'll hear more from Boxite football as we preview the minor season. Before we get to that, a look ahead to this year's Hot Springs Trojans featuring a star-studded passing attack. Feral's 40 team previews right after this. You're watching Final Score on Fox 16. Am I hungry or is high school football so close that you can almost taste it? Well, if I feel that way, you know players across the state are even hungrier with the season kicking off in just a few weeks. That includes the two teams we hear from this weekend for Fearless 40 team previews. We start things off with the Hot Springs Trojans who will field an offense loaded with talent. Specifically through the air with two wideouts holding D1 offers like Octavius Rhodes with that grab and fellow star target TJ Brogdon. Darrell Burnett is back for his sixth season as head coach, coming off a 7-4 season that ended with a five-point loss to Mills in the first round. It was the program's best record since 2014 in spite of a tough 5A South. But the Trojans aren't satisfied, coming just short in the clutch against top teams like Arkadelphia and Parkview. With quarterback Matthew Contreras and running back Perry Jones back in the fold, Hot Springs hopes a prolific offense can lead to a deep run. 
I think this year we're we're very capable of, of winning the championship, the state championship 5A. We have, like I said, we have the same pieces from last year on offense, and we don't have necessarily a lot of new guys on defense, fairly half and half. But with the guys that we have now, they've been working all summer to get better and better, and I think we can really make a, a far run in the playoffs this year. I say our receivers, our receivers are explosive. We had more receivers this year, and more experience, like more than ever. We've been working all summer getting better. And yeah, deep balls, short balls, all that, I'm doing that. I was out four games, but it's not gonna be like that this year. It's coming harder this year. Our motivation is we want to get a ring before we graduate. And we build a legacy towards our hot springs, Trojans, build a legacy towards that. Uh, our receiving core is big one of our strengths. Our running backs, they're really big in our plays that we got going this year. Um, some old linemen that are coming back and then some that are new to it. Our strengths are really going to be our offense. And then we're going to really rely on our defense because defense wins games a little bit. So that's, that's going to be good for us. I believe in everybody, I believe in my boys. We have a lot of chemistry. I, I think we can get really far this season. You know, we got probably about 60 some guys out. Only like 13 of them are seniors, but they're good. All three of those guys was either, you know, all state or all sophomore were coming up one time and all conference running back returning, you know, and two of those receivers got, you know, multiple D1 offers. So we tell them, you know, uh, guys with offers don't supposed to fit in, you're supposed to stand out. Uh, so we expect for them to have a great year. Uh, and get it going. Not too many teams can say they got two D1 receivers and you got a quarterback with one of the strongest arms. And then we got a running back that's hungry, you know, so in our offensive line are great kids that work the bus off. And then we got to change some things up on defense, you know, as far as replace some linebackers and two positions in secondary. But uh, I'm expecting our offense and our special teams to get us going and get over that hump and then defense, you know, do your job, you know, don't give up a lot of points, make teams work for it. And then that's when the turnovers and the mistakes to come. A lot of experience from last year. So it shouldn't be, you know, too much new other than some of our offense changing. We're more of an option offense now. No huddle, line it back up on the ball because that messed up a lot of teams. You know, they got tired fast. We got a lot of good guys. They've been working, working their butt off the whole summer, getting better getting better reads, get better calls and stuff. Learn, learning, the, learning the offense and know how to know where to get, know where to be when to get there, so yeah. You gotta be ready for the moment. Quite a few moments we kind of let things slip away or we didn't put a game away or we didn't capitalize off of sudden death or things, things of that nature. We gotta get past that hump. And then our goals gotta be different too. It can't just be good to the playoffs. Had a successful season last year, but you know, like we tell them, you know, that's not the standard. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be the norm. We want to be playing th past Thanksgiving. You know, 74 is good, but it's not good enough. Uh, and we just want our kids to understand it's not that we're ungrateful or we're not happy what we did last year. We are. We just want them to keep on climbing, you know, because that's the thing in life. You know, you can't get satisfied, you know, as a husband, as a wife, anything. You know, as you're working a job, you got to keep on pressing up and keep on trying to improve because if you don't, somebody will replace you. So uh, our kids are buying into that and they're doing a good job. Carrying on to another team to the south of Little Rock with big name talent. You heard from their newly declared Razorbacks commit earlier in the show. But how do the Bauxite Miners look as a whole? Coming off just two wins in 2021, the Miners shot that up to seven last fall, falling to Nashville in the first round. With former Razorbacks offensive lineman Caleb Perry at head coach, make no mistake, Bauxite takes pride in being gritty, boasting a defense that's maybe the best in conference for 4A. Future hog Marcus Wimberly headlines both sides of the ball as a rising junior, but there's plenty of talent to not take lightly and a hard hitting mentality that defense wins championships. Well, I think our defense at Boxside is always uh, one of the best things that we bring to the table. Uh, our guys are just relentless. Our defensive line, all of our defensive linemen right now uh, run a 4840 or faster. So it's the fastest defensive line that I've ever coached in my 18 years of coaching. And uh, we, uh, we, we've got a returning veteran linebacker crew, which of course, anytime you've got great linebackers such as uh, Kyle Vokey and Hunter McWilliams coming back, it, those guys just fix everything. You know, they're kind of the quarterbacks of the defense. And our defensive backfield will be led by Garrett Oliver, who's a three-year starter, uh, Orlando Patino. We've got a bunch of guys that are uh, sold-out players that love, love being a minor. And 
Uh, so I would definitely say our defense is probably, and obviously Marcus Wimberly at safety, you know, is yeah, he's going to do a great job as well. Oh, I'm pumped. We got we got a lot of good guys back, and uh, we got to put together a few pieces in fall camp. But I think once we get those pieces put together, we've got some head knocking guys that are ready to go head to head. You know, and uh, we're going to play hard no matter who we're playing. I don't care. You can put us against Bryant. You put us against anybody. We're going we're gonna to give it our all until that last final buzzer goes. We're going to go to war with what we have, and we're going to make a pretty good run. The spirit of the Boxite Miners never really changes. It's They're just a relentless group of football players that love to hit. They love to pursue the ball. Uh, you know, these kids work very, very hard. Uh, they've got great attitudes. They're very coachable, very teachable. Every group that I've had here at Boxside, I've loved them. And so uh, they've all shared that in common. I, I do believe, uh, you know, this group for me was a group that I had in junior high. And so I've known these guys. I've gotten to know the personnel, where guys can go. And, of course, our coaches, you know, same thing. We, we feel like we've got a good handle on these guys. And, you know, they, they were successful in junior high. And, you know, now they've got that taste in their mouth. And so, you know, our goal, we want to obviously, you know, you always want to win the championship, but we want to, you got to start with conference first, you know, and then you got to make it to Thanksgiving. And, you know, once you make it to Thanksgiving, it's anybody's ball game after that. Best of luck to Boxite and Hot Springs this season. Okay, after the break, we'll switch gears and talk about a sport that you don't see every day on the news. A North Little Rock man is in Scotland competing for Team USA in BMX. That story after the break. You're watching Final Score on Fox 16. Razorback country, let's ride. Okay, you haven't heard that one yet from the Hogs this offseason. It didn't work out well for the Denver Broncos last year. But for one amateur BMXer in North Little Rock, despite being over the age of 50, he's riding on a global scale. And we're all riding for him. Inspired by his two sons, Rob McCauley is doing what he never thought was possible, representing his state and his country in the UCI World Championships in Scotland. Check it out. One Arkansas man is gaining speed, catching air, and beating the odds. 53-year-old Rob McCauley of North Little Rock is on his way to Scotland to compete for Team USA in the UCI Cycling World Championships, where an expected 10,000 riders from 120 countries will race in 13 cycling disciplines. McCauley going to call them up right there out of Liberty BMX. All these guys that, that I race now in the old group are former pros back in the late 80s, early 90s. They're all my age. I was not doing BMX and they were BMXing as pros and then they came out of retirement and the next thing you know I've got to race them and I'm just some kid's dad. McCauley going to get that three spot on that second round right there. One of just six Americans in the 50 and over amateur age group riding the cruiser bike at the event and the only Arkansan adult who qualified for Worlds. McCauley picked up BMX after his two sons raced from a young age. Ian previously being a nationally ranked rider. Deciding to put the pedal to the metal changed Rob's life, shedding over 50 pounds in the process. At 40 years old, I came off the couch and, and just decided to get healthy, and then I was, got addicted to BMX and never thought I'd find myself here. I really started taking it serious the past couple of years and doing some extra training, and we have a track at Burns Park, we have a track in Cabot. You can race four days a week, five days a week sometimes, weather permitting, and I just go and I go and I go and I go. After years of practice and thousands of hours of riding, McCauley went to a Florida qualifier event in February to beat out talent from all over the states and become one of 16 Americans to make the cut. One of six who chose to pay their way to Scotland, he'll join 75 riders worldwide competing in the cruiser bike races, trying to advance to deeper rounds. It's more than just a vacation, as he'll represent Central Arkansas on the track starting Sunday. There are only eight spots in the main event, eight world number plates that you are a world top eight. That's all there is. I don't have any necessarily uh, grandiose ideas that I'm top eight because like I say, I'm only top 25 in the country, let alone. But again, situationally, crazier things have happened. I've been in you know, sixth place and had two of the fastest guys in the world crash in front of me. And the next thing you know, I'm in fourth. So these things can happen and a uh, little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. I do like my chances on the big hill, which is the way they run it over there. So we'll see what happens.
pretty awesome. All right, best of luck to Rob. You can head to UCI.org to see how he placed and how far he'd advance. Either way, I'm sure these races won't be Rob's last. Stay right here because Final Score will be right back. You're watching Final Score on Fox 16. Well, it's that time of the show when we reveal our athlete of the week. Fall camp is in session for college and high school teams, but this week we're going to cheat the system a little bit, giving a kudos to two young athletes and stay with me here, but neither are from Arkansas. It was a big week of golf in the natural state. Hot Springs Country Club hosting the Junior PGA Championships. Some of the top rising talent from around the nation flocked to courses in our own backyard, trying to place for the Junior Ryder Cup. Every one of them trying to beat the heat too. Two Florida kids would finish the week in first. Miles Russell out of Jacksonville for the boys and Gianna Clemente for the girls. I know our former host Madison Fitzpatrick out of Tallahassee would be proud of them. Hear from the junior PGA winners after taking first. Uh, I mean, it was Hot Springs was it's a cool little town. I mean, Hot Springs Country Club. It's great, great course. It was awesome host and golf course was fit, fit me well. It's been amazing. Um, definitely two beautiful courses. Very hot weather, but that's okay. Um, definitely was more of a grind it out today. Um, it is so hot and we are all so tired. So. Yeah, I don't know how much water I drink, but I drink way too much water, if that's even possible. But it was, it was brutal out there today. How much water do you think you drank out there? Oh, I couldn't even count. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I was about a bottle of water per three holes. So do that math. I am not doing it right now. I mean, I just I played solid golf. I did everything I was trying to do, and it's something I've been trying to work on, and it paid off this week. It's a big confidence booster. I mean, I've been playing well all summer, was patient, stuck to the game plan, and played my golf. So it's just a good way to end this. Big congrats to those golfers. All right, thanks for joining us for Final Score. We'll see you next week right here on Final Score.